What up players, it's Warboss Tail up in this mug. Today we are painting up this Telebic Lander Greatsword. So you're gonna need Averlin Sunset, Irio Yellow, Seraphim Sepia. And I'm doing these paints in, in groupings, so that's all the yellow pieces, or yellow bits. Steel Legion Drab, you've got some cloth and leather. A lead Belcher for obviously all the silver parts. For the red, we're going to be using Me Fiston Red, Evil Sun's Scarlet, and Agrax Earthshade. A lot of debate over whether Agrax Earthshade or Caribou Crimson is the better shade for red. I find Agrax is pretty good. Okay, Balthazar Gold for the gold, Mornfang Brown for other leather straps and uh, whatnot. Bugman's Glow for the skin. Cadian Flesh Tone, again, for the skin. We shade the skin using Raiklin Flesh Shade. Evils of Evil. Mechanicus Standard Gray is for the gray. There's your Raiklin Flesh Shade. Known Oil for all of the uh, silver parts. And here's a finished look at what, your, what it's going to look like at the end of part one. All right, here we go. And again, it's only that shiny because I just finished painting the last shade on, so that's where that shine is. It's gonna dry and be pretty pretty matte by the time I get to part two. All right, so I'm gonna start with the yellows, and with the yellows, it's Averland Sunset. A lot of people ask why I don't prime my models. If you look at the model, he doesn't really look primed. He looks like I just built him up and got to painting, but I always prime my models, and a lot of these guys are primed in gray. You know what, I don't have a gray primer up here. None of the places I went to uh, so far have gray primers, so uh, you might be seeing more models primed in black or white or other colors. Uh, but I usually use a gray primer because I think it's great. It's this flat matte gray you can see on him and uh, it just works so well. Okay, so the Everland Sunset is going on. Right off screen I've got my wet palette and uh, that's where I'm putting all the paint. And uh, for using Averland Sunset especially, not so much Mephiston Red, but Averland Sunset is a kind of tricky color. As I was painting on this, this uh, trouser leg, I was thinking, oh, I should have probably base coated with like a Steel Legion Drab or some other um, like darker color to build up to the yellow, but um, I, th I think it's okay because it's just it's just going over the gray base uh, the gray undercoat and um, if I need to which I think I do later I'll just paint it back up the brush is a terrible brush I don't know why I grabbed this this brush to paint uh, all this yellow bits I got some paint on the sword okay so the this particular model has armor all down the left arm I'm not sure. I don't have all my great swords in front of me. I'm not sure if that's true for every great swordsman. I think some of them have ruffled sleeves on both arms, but this one did not. So depending on what model you're using, uh, you might have to paint the the left side in yellow. I'm pretty sure some of them have have both both arms in roughly sleeves. Big, poofy, roughly sleeves. Alright, so Mephiston Red is going to be our base coat on this side. And these big, poofy sleeves are just so awesome. So what I'm doing is I'm painting this guy as I paint a lot of my Empire troops in quartered pattern. And what that means is that I, I split up their uniforms so that half of it is one color, the other half is the other color, and then for the other part of their uniform, so say I'm looking at the top, I'm painting the right side in red, the left side in yellow, you just flip that around for the bottom. So in the bottom the right leg is yellow and the left leg is red.
Again, having your wet palette right there next to you is a huge help. You'll notice that for the leg armor on the left side, there's some straps in the back there, and uh, I could be tedious and try to paint around the straps, but you're just going to paint over them anyway, so it'll save you time. Just paint, paint all the way down, and just don't don't even worry about it. So there already you've got that bright yellow and red Talabic Lander color scheme. And the funny thing is that Talabic, Talabic, Lind, Talabic Lind, whatever you want to call it, as we get into the Bugman's Glow for the skin, is the province that houses the, the capital of Talabic Lind is Talabheim. And most of the Empire color schemes you see, that red and white uniform for all of the Empire products on the Games Workshop website, are Talabheim colors. Which is funny because Talabheim is not the capital of the Empire. Altdorf is the capital of the Empire. And the Altdorf colors are red and blue. But a lot of times when you see, like if, if you go out and buy a State Troopers box set or a Handgunners Crossbowman box set, the models are painted in the traditional red and white of Talapheim. So just something interesting to think about. All these models belong to different provinces and um, little regions of the Empire. And so the purpose of this video and this series of videos in the, the Tour of the Empire is uh, to show you how to paint the different color schemes because each of the provinces, just like you know, in, in, in the world, different parts of the world have different kinds of personalities, different things that make them unique to each other. Talibicland is known to be more uh, forested and the people there are more in touch and in tune with, with nature and uh, not too much, but it's named after the god of nature, Ta'al, in the empire. and. Um, he's the god of, of his. I think his symbol is like the stag, and so um, you know they kind of they don't look down on all the newest technological advances and and stuff. But they are very tradition traditional minded people. And here you can see I'm going back over with my Averland sunset. Okay, so I made a mistake. Between the videos, you'll see this little sleeve on his left arm. I thought it was just kind of like a cuff, like the right arm. No, it's supposed to be in metal, and you can tell because of the rivets on the arm bracer. So I go back between clips and, and repaint it. All right, Mornfang Brown is going to be the wrapping of this great sword here. This video is also a July Painting Challenge appreciation video for War Chef Andy. As we go on into the lead belcher for all the silver, now that I've got a minute to, to talk about him. War Chef Andy, uh, originally, I, I think I knew him as Telebraus, was um, this guy that joined up the July Painting Challenge uh, two years ago, I believe, with a staggering project of the Death Corps of Krieg and I thought it was just awesome and unbelievable. He had all these models. He was one of my original inspirations to pick up more Death Corps of Krieg stuff along with War Tiger. So please check him out. I'm going to post a link to his channel in the description so you can check out his channel. He's a great guy and his July Painting Challenge videos last year and I think the year before they were just so fun to watch and especially when he would go out and show us uh, around his his town uh, it was just so awesome to see it because uh, we, the lady boss and I really like Europe we enjoy seeing anything about Europe and um, the European countries and the, the countryside and and everything so uh, it was cool when he would you take the camera around and, and show us around. So the July Painting Challenge, besides showing off a bunch of projects from people, is a great way to uh, get to know 
our, our little community of gamers and uh, I'm really really happy that he uh, took part. So Warchef Andy, thank you for being such an awesome participant. This past year, the reason why this is a July Painting Challenge appreciation video for him is because he did he did flagellants and great swords and uh, so I decided, oh, I, I want to paint up a great sword anyway, so I'd uh, for, for, a, for a painting tutorial, so I'm gonna make this one dedicated to you, buddy. Thank you again, and I uh, hope everything is going well with you. So the reason why I wanted to do a great sword, some of you might be wondering, oh, why aren't I doing a state trooper or or a uh, or a crossbowman or, or, or a different type of type of unit is because the great swords are like the elite, the best of the best, and I'm not, uh, hmm, I'm not sure where Karaberg is because the Karaberg great swords are the most famous, the red and white ones. I think they might be in Telepiclin then, though, so. That could be why, but also because with all of the end time stuff coming out, the Empire of Man is not doing so good. Um, our buddy Carl Franz, he's kind of hard pressed. He's he's had some rough times recently, um, so I I thought you know what most people out there are not going to be doing the blocks, the huge blocks of state troopers. They might I, I I don't know what the army lists are like, but I think a lot of Empire players out there to combat the craziness of of all the big bad stuff that's coming out that Belcher again are gonna want to be doing more um, more specialized and elite things so great swords artillery I think you're gonna see a lot of that and that's why I decided to do this for a tutorial I only got a couple left what's after Talabicland? Wissenland? I gotta look at my <laughs> uh, uniforms and heraldry of the Empire again all right, so I've, I've given my my guy some time to dry, and you saw that I painted Lead Belcher over the little bracer there. I thought I did it in between clips, but yeah, well. Mechanicus Standard Gray. So I decided to make this great swordsman a little bit more grizzled and and haggard and had it and. Uh, just more of a veteran and so we're giving him a gray beard and so we're starting with the mustache and what I noticed about him was you you can decide to pa to paint him if you want with like a full beard I'm kind of going for more of like a goatee with the beard uh, growing at the bottom but if you wanted to do like the full cheeks all the way up to the cheekbones you can too uh, you you'll, you'll see in just a second what I mean so if I turn him to the side a little bit, the next time you see him turn to the side, you'll see the uh, left side of his face. The beard comes up just under his chin, so I'm going to leave his cheek and his jawline without uh, hair, just to give a little bit more pop of that flesh color. Alright, moving on to Ariel Yellow. This is a tricky one you're going to need your wet palette for, because Ariel Yellow is one of those layer paints that if it's on your brush, as soon as it comes out of the pot, it wants to, it wants to uh, set, it wants to harden, it wants to dry. So if you don't mix it with a little bit of water and thin it down in a wet palette, it's going to be harder to work with. You're going to have less control with it on your brush. And you'll notice that when I'm painting it on, I'm using very short strokes. Not like with the Avalon Sunset where I'm just kind of slapping it on the model. I'm looking for the highlighted or, or the areas that I want to highlight and I'm just trying to stay away from the shadowy recessed area so I'm not going like under his butt cheek right there I'm, I'm just kind of going for the like the, the, the larger flaps of the fabric and leaving the little slashes untouched
I know uh, Ringo Simpkins also paints or has a collection of Empire Talabic lenders I've seen on his channel. Another fantastic guy. I started working on my 6mm Byzantines also. I mean, just a little bit off topic for a bit, but ooh, they are small. Those guys are small, they're tiny. Okay, we're gonna start highlighting the red and we're gonna use Evil Sun Scarlet. This is another one you want to thin on your wet palette if you can. God peace! And again we're hitting the flaps of the fabric where it folds over, that's kind of where the light would catch it, and um, drawing our paint strokes up towards the next layer. And trying to leave the shading down underneath. I mean the when we use our shades, our washes, it's going to really help us, but we can kind of set the, set the tone by doing it beforehand right now in this initial highlight. You can see those, those straps on the back of the leg armor there, which we're going to be painting up in just a second. See my brush is getting kind of kind of frayed at the end. Probably time to retire this one. When the bristles fray like that, it's it's harder, it gets harder and harder to use effectively. Alright, moving on, we're gonna paint the cloth areas now with Steel Legion Drab. A lot of these cloth areas, I've mentioned this with other Empire videos, but you're gonna have lots of straps, lots of leather buckles, belts, um, holsters, lots of things on your models that you can paint in a couple different colors, and your options would be this, Steel Legion Drab for a more kind of milk chocolatey brown. You've also got that Mornfang brown, which you see on the on the greatsword itself. And a third option is to go really light with Rackhart flesh. And uh, that's usually reserved for more like scrolls and parchment, but you could also use that as well. The, the great thing about these brown colors though is that there's no real right way to do it. There's there's nothing that says that the, the boots have to be a certain color. The shoes, the, the belts, all men of the empire wear this color belt. They're all going to be different. So you can use your imagination, you can go wild. This is just the way that I chose to paint this particular model, but hey, if I painted this yesterday or a couple hours earlier, maybe I would have said, yeah, I think that belt around his waist should be a Mornfang brown. Uh, it's really up to you and there is no wrong answer. Going back to Mornfang Brown now. I'm gonna hit these, these straps with this Mornfang Brown. And here's a perfect example. Looking at this right now, I wanted to do a second flash of Mornfang Brown because right now the only Mornfang Brown thing is the wrapping around the, the sword. But if I were to do this model again, I would have done the belt around his waist in Mornfang Brown and then done those straps on, on the back of his leg armor in Steel Legion Drab. So really, there's it's whatever you want to do, um, is it's up to you. Okay, Katie and Flesh Tone now for the skin. So for those of you who, I've had a couple people ask me how I do my skin highlights and check out how I paint 
the skin on the knuckles. This, the skin tone just kind of starts at the knuckles and pushes towards the back of the hand where the shadows are. It's really not that hard to do it a lot. I've gotten a lot of compliments for which I'm very grateful, but um, it is really not that that difficult. You just want to leave some of the, the, the darker Bugman's glow underneath and you want to paint the highlight on whichever part of the skin would be the palest. And I think about, okay, this guy's hands gripping this hilt of this great sword. The knuckles are going to be white. The um, the fingers that are closest to the to the light are going to be a little bit brighter. And also considering that this guy's a little bit of an older gentleman, I'm going to try to get more of this pale skin tone to look kind of washed out and, and a little bit ashy, as it were, so that it'll give him a little bit of an older older look and and we'll really get into that when we do the highlights after the after the shade it doesn't really count now because we when you shade your model especially the skin with Raglan flesh shade it's going to turn it a lot darker and just tie all the colors together okay moving on now to more uh, Balthazar gold I said more fang brown we're looking for the areas of of gold to distinguish this guy from the rank and file to really ornament his armor to really make him stand out and now if this were a state trooper all the silver totally fine but the fact that a great swordsman is a, a veteran of a lot of different battles and he's been gifted the finest armor and the finest weapons we want to give him the uh, the trim and the ornamentation that that he deserves. So I'm I'm looking at the trim of the back of his breastplate, this skull on his on his helmet, the wreath on his on his chest plate, and that's fine because that's all molded onto his armor. But then I've decided, you know, I'm going to go a step further. I'm going to paint the little hooks there that are keeping his leg armor attached. I'm going to paint the little rivets on his plates there. And then, this is something you can do with any of your, your troops that you want to show veteran status to. All you have to do is just paint the edges where each of the armor plates meet each other. So in the sea of iron or silver, you're going to see flashes of gold. And it's going to break up the plates, it's going to show um, a good balance because all of those lines are where the armor plates kind of meet and it gives you that that sense that this character is important and special and maybe if he were in a regular state trooper unit fighting not with a greatsword but with a sword and shield or with a halberd then he would be leading it he would be the sergeant he would be the, uh, the lieutenant but um, in this unit of, of heroes who are all equally as distinguished and heroic and celebrated for their deeds he is one of a company of these great men and so we're giving him the armor and the, the, the trim to reflect that. All right, moving into the shades now. We're gonna start with Gnome Oil. And this is gonna go over all of the armor. We wanna hit all the silver and all the gold. Uh, it didn't look like there was a cut there, but right before I started this washes section, I let the paint dry a little bit, which you wanna do because especially when you're working with metallic paints, if the paint is not dry, and you start putting on those shades, it will spread, the paint will spread, and with metallic paints especially, because it has those reflective um, little flakes inside the paint, it's it's gonna be a bad time for you. So make sure you give your, your paints a little bit of time between each new coat that you put on. Five, 10 minutes is, is usually fine, especially if it's under a light, like I've got mine going. Let's get up, grab a bite to eat, use the bathroom, stretch and uh, by the time you get back it should be ready for the next coat of paint especially after the shades you'll notice that between parts one of my videos and part twos the part two videos i always wait a, a good while because i want that shade to be dry if you start trying to highlight your model and that shade is not dry again it will just spread all your paint around and it's going to be a horrible effect Okay, I'm kind of going in a this this new direction of shading yellow with with 
red. It's not really a new direction. Um, a lot of people have been doing it, but uh, I usually shade my yellow with a different color. Maybe I think it's Cassandori yellow is the shade for it, which is fine. But I'm using Seraphim Sepia to get the yellow because what it does, it, it gives it a nice muted, not cartoony look. If you want your, your Tylabic Blender to be bright, cartoony, and vibrant, then maybe you might want to go with the Cassandora yellow, but I want him to look a little bit more realistic and the dyes to look a little bit more realistic. So I went with Seraphim Sepia for the yellows and you can see it makes it look really nice. Agrax Earth Shade is going to be our red color shade. So we're going to just paint that into the red areas of the uniform. It goes into the the crevices really nicely and it adds uh, added bonus is it shades all the straps on the back of the armor really nice as well especially these big poofy slashed sleeves up at the top get some nice shade in there with shades you want to leave at least a couple of hours to dry just to be sure you always want to you got to be absolutely certain you know Raiklin Flesh Shade. I'm looking at my greatsword right now and uh, he's still drying so I'm gonna... I was thinking of trying to film part two tonight but maybe I'll, I'll let that... let him dry a little bit more and come back to him tomorrow. Alright so go check out Warchef Andy's YouTube channel. I'll put a link at the bottom. Great guy and uh, thank you for watching part one of how to paint a Talibic Lender greatsword for the Empire Army for Warhammer Fantasy. Latest players!